Hello everyone, it's Monday and you're watching Within the Frame. I'm Kim bo -kyung. Clusters of respiratory illness outbreaks are putting many countries on alert. South Korea too is not an exception. The KDCA reported the number of hospitalized patients with respiratory illnesses increased 1.6 times from the first week of November to the fourth week. Infections by mycoplasma pneumoniae, a bacterium that causes walking pneumonia, are reportedly common in school-aged children and could be resistant to some antibiotics. This is all raising worries about a potential pediatric care crisis as practices nationwide are already suffering from staffing shortages. What symptoms are caused by mycoplasma pneumoniae and how concerning are they? For an answer to this, we have invited Professor Kim Mung-gyu from Yonsei University College of Medicine into the studio. Welcome, Professor Kim. Thank you for having me. And we also have Professor Peter Chin Hong from the University of California, San Francisco. Good to see you, Professor Chin Hong. Good to see you again, Po Kyung. Good to see you. Now, first question to our Professor Kim. First of all, I would like to ask what this mycoplasma pneumonia actually is. I heard that somebody calls it walking pneumonia. Why is this? Well, first of all, when we say pneumonia, I can say that it's kind of the uh, respiratory infection, but the strongest type. Mm -hmm. So uh, many people have to be admitted to hospital. Uh, actually, there are many pathogens causing uh, pneumonia, virus, bacteria, even fungus. Mm -hmm. Uh, and each specific pathogen have a different virulence, something sometimes strong and sometimes mild. Uh, mycoplasma is one of them, and usually it's just a mild infection. And uh, compared to other bacteria such as pneumococcus, Haemophilus influenza, uh, those uh, bacteria have a very severe course, but mycoplasma pneumonia, sometimes it can be cured even without antibiotics in some patients. Mm. So that's why you can walk with uh, pneumonia. So mm. that's the reason we have a name like that. Mm. And long time ago, we used to call it atypical pneumonia because the clinical course was uh, different. So uh, the incidence is high among uh, school ages and even younger. Uh, and in Korea, uh, we had a surge of mycoplasma infection in 2019, it was about four years ago. Mm. So uh, we had a pattern about f three to four years, mm. we had a surge of mycoplasma. And uh, uh, after 2019, we had a uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then we are in 2023. So okay. I guess th we are following this pattern. Mm, all right, I see. Now, Professor Chin Hong, uh, on top of our professor, what our Professor Kim already told us, how does this spread? Well, Po Kiang, it spreads through respiratory droplets. Mm -hmm. uh, these droplets are heavy. They usually fall within two meters or uh, six feet. Uh, so you can, if you stand far away, uh, it's less likely to get it than if you are at close quarters. Uh, it's very similar to the way uh, influenza is spread. So it's, it's in that same kind of transmission. The incubation period is about three weeks, so longer than most respiratory viruses. But the attack rate is very high, meaning that if it's in a household, uh, about 90% of the people will get it. All right, I see. So it spreads through respiratory droplets. All right, now we know what this resp respiratory illness is and how it spreads. Now, Professor Kim, another important thing is correctly diagnosing it. And so I'd like to ask you about the signs and symptoms. Are symptoms different uh, depending on the age group? And how is it different from uh, when the, this illness is developing into a pneumonia? Well, <clears throat> uh, in the beginning, you cannot distinguish by symptom mm. uh, from other types of pneumonia or respiratory infection. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, Symptoms of mycoplasma infection is almost same, whatever the age uh, of the patient is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they include fever, mm -hmm. coughing, and sometimes headache. Mm -hmm. And we start to consider uh, taking chest x-ray if the uh, symptom continues more than five days. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, usually patients have an additional symptoms such as uh, poor oral intake, 
or fatigue, mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, shortness of breathing. Mm. Uh, so usually the patients start to show symptoms of dehydration. Uh, in the case of mycoplasma pneumonia, sometimes we have some uh, uh, clinical manifestations out of the lung. Mm. We call it extra pulmonary manifestation, and it includes, includes some skin rash, and sometimes we have uh, uh, patients with anemia. Mm, all right, thank you for letting us know what the symptoms are. Now, uh, Professor Chin Hong, we need to now know how to treat it. Some reports say that mycoplasma pneumonia can be resistant to common I antibiotics. Is this true? And what antibiotics do doctors usually use? And if the common ones do not work well, what are the alternatives? Um, well, there is some resistance reported in different parts of the world. Uh, around, you know, 7.5% in some studies. Uh, people are more likely to have resistance uh, to, the, to the commonly used drugs if they use a lot of antibiotics, if they're immune compromised, uh, and sometimes if they have more ser serious disease. Um, some of the typical antibiotics we use are not the ones we normally use for pneumonia in some places. Uh, like amoxicillin, so those don't work. So you have to use drugs like azithromycin or doxycycline. And in some cases, although we don't like to use it for children, uh, quinolones like ciprofloxacin. So these are kind of drugs that we use for this specific kind of bacteria. So this is a bacteria, not a virus like influenza or COVID. So we use antibiotics uh, for this drug for this bug. So you think about resistance when a child, for example, uh, is having a fever for more than 48 hours uh, and you put them on a particular drug. So you have to uh, use some of these alternatives. Uh, for example, if you use azithromycin to treat it, and maybe that child has used a lot of azithromycin before for treatment of other illnesses like air infections, uh, they may res become resistant. So I think it's up to clinicians to really suspect resistance in the right patient and in the right context. All right, I see your point, Professor Chino. Now, uh, Professor Kim, as we all know, it's winter season, and there are so many other respiratory illnesses, such as flu. I know that health officials pointed out that this mycoplasma pneumonia has low fertility rate, but if a patient gets infected with other respiratory illnesses, would that increase this rate? and? or, you know, contribute to pneumonia developing? Well, if the patient is healthy and does not have uh, underlying conditions, uh, we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, we, as you mentioned in the beginning, we have about uh, 50 to 60 percent increase of uh, respiratory infections mm -hmm. compared to uh, previous month. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to find some reports about uh, mixed infection in mycoplasma and I found an article uh, published in 2020 by Chinese uh, doctors. And uh, uh, interestingly, they report that uh, the missed infection rate is more than 60%. Mm. So I don't know how they get that uh, 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 percentage. But in Korea, I don't have the uh, exact data. But uh, since we, get, we have a lot of uh, diagnostic modalities in emergency department, such as uh, film array uh, respiratory panel test, we can have about 20 uh, viruses and bacteria result at once. Mm. And, and we have the result within one or two hours. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we see patients with mixed infection. But uh, each pathogen is not that virulent. Mm -hmm. But uh, if the patient has a longer prolonged period of fever, uh, patients get even sick, and they might have uh, secondary uh, problems mm. also. So we have to be cautious about that. Mm. Uh, in an emergency department, we saw a few cases with mortality because the patient was bedridden, had the underlying disorder, mm. and the lung condition was poor. Mm. And they found that the uh, pneumonia was progressing at a rapid uh, speed. So uh, those, custom, those kind of patients should be concerned. Mm, all right. So mixed infection is possible, and in that case, we could we need to be cautious mm -hmm. even more. All right. Now, Professor Chin Hong, uh, we also need to talk about China's case. 
China has already been seeing a spike in the number of uh, mycoplasma pneumonia infections. And as far as I know, this res respiratory infection recurs every three to four years in Korea, as our professor Kim already mentioned before. And though it could be different from the situation in Korea, why is China suffering from this outbreak so heavily? Well, Po Kyung, uh, the situation in China is a little bit different from many parts of the world, primarily because they were one of the last countries to end restrictions for COVID. And what that meant was that the uh, population wasn't really exposed to a lot of viruses, but even to a lot of bacteria like mycoplasma uh, for many years. So if you think about uh, you know, three and a half years with restrictions, that means that uh, uh, particularly young children have never really been exposed to any of these kinds of pathogens. So we're not only talking about mycoplasma in China, we're talking about a whole host of other infections like COVID, like adenovirus, like influenza, like RSV. And, um, you know, in an outpatient setting uh, where you can have uh, thousands of uh, people in China in a hospital or clinic, uh, they can have many of these other kinds of illnesses uh, all at once. It's, it's not common to diagnose mycoplasma in the clinic. So when somebody comes in with a respiratory virus, even though mycoplasma is higher, we know from the data, uh, there's also a whole host of other infections that are increasing because of the lack of population immunity, because they haven't been exposed, particularly children, for the last several years. Oh, right, I see. Oh. Professor Chin Ho, in that case, you already mentioned that China is actually quite under the special circumstance. So would that mean that the chances of a mycoplasma pneumonia pandemic uh, becoming a pandemic would be quite low? Yes, it would be quite low in mm -hmm. general, mainly because it's not a novel pathogen. Uh, it's something that, you know, as you mentioned, we see every few years in, uh, in a big spurt. But, you know, we see a steady stream of mycoplasma even in the off years. So it's not really gone away and then comes back. And it's not a, a new pathogen. So there is some level of population immunity uh, to begin with. So that means that, uh, you know, you wouldn't really see it, uh, you know, lead to a lot of uh, suffering and deaths like we did with COVID. All right, I see your point. Now, uh, Professor Kim, uh, let's move on to proper responses South Korean government needs to make. Well, some watchers say the government's current response is quite complacent, and they added that KDCA sampling survey uh, is quite limited to hospital-level medical institutions with more than 200 hospital beds. What's your view on this? Well, uh, KDCA have a system uh, to collecting data and uh, it's kind of a uh, basis information structure uh, for our health uh, uh, issues. And uh, yeah, uh, they collect data from the hospitals, more than 200 beds. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that can show, uh, at least in, in part, mm -hmm. the pattern of uh, infection pattern in Korea. Mm -hmm. I guess the, uh, uh, there, if there's no new type of infection or no mutation, uh, this situation is not a big deal, mm. no big concern. Uh, but uh, I don't know the hospital system in China, but if they, uh, there are many patients staying together, many kinds of infections, uh, they spread to each one another, mm -hmm. and that might come to uh, neighboring countries. So. Uh, uh, the more earlier we have uh, accurate situation of China, it's better for us to uh, respond. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, China lost some credibility at the early stage of uh, COVID-19 mm. pandemic. Right. So, uh, uh, we, and also we have a very limited data about uh, mixed infection. Mm. Uh, each one infection is not that uh, serious. Mm -hmm. I mean, mycoplasma usually, uh, healthy people overcome it, mm. but uh, we don't know whether it's a kind of a new subtype or new mutation. Mm. I wish we can have that information more early mm. and also about uh, drug resistance. Mm. 
uh, Korea has some kind, some level of uh, antibiotics regulation, but I think China does not have mm. it. And also Korea a long time ago, we didn't have it. So I think uh, uh, I can guess the situation in China, but uh, usually in that situation, people can get antibiotics at the pharmacy without doctor's prescription. That makes the uh, instance, incidence of bacterial resistance mm. and antibiotic resistance higher. So uh, if the pathogen is already resistant to antibiotics, it's, it's coming, become a little bit difficult uh, to treat if we mm. start with uh, resistance. All right. So you're saying that it is not as concerning as China's situation, but mm. uh, Professor, there are some of the people who are saying that the pediatric care crisis could happen, given that pediatric clinics and hospitals are already overwhelmed in South Korea because of the staffing shortages. Uh, how concerning is this? And what kind of proactive measures do you believe government should take to prevent this kind of situation? Yeah, this morning I just came to know about Doktak is mm -hmm. kind of an application yes. in the mm -hmm. mobile oh, <laughs> that I've heard shows of the, how uh, the private clinic is crowded mm -hmm. or not. You're going to wait a long time or not. Yeah, it's <laughs> amazing for me. Anyway, uh, during the uh, pandemic, we, many private clinics, uh, pediatricians, has to close their clinic. Mm. Uh, and uh, now we have a surge of this respiratory infection. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons we have a uh, uh, overloading of the uh, clinics right now. Mm. Uh, well, fatality is low, so it's not a big concern. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, patients with uh, underlying conditions, you have to be cautious. And uh, uh, well, in Seoul, the capital is a little bit better, but the uh, regional hospitals mm -hmm. in, in uh, other many parts of Korea, mm -hmm. uh, the situation is very worse. Right. So. Uh, uh, we need to more boost up the manpower, uh, especially for pediatric intensive care units and mm. uh, emergency rooms. So I wish government start to move mm. to do something for this. All right, I see your point. Now, uh, Professor Chin Ho, uh, preventing children from being infected with mycoplasma and pneumonia at home is also important. So what preventive measures could parents or guardians take? Well, Pukyang, uh, coming back to how it's transmitted, which is through respiratory droplets, some of the same strategies you use for prevention of influenza, COVID, and other respiratory illnesses also apply. So it's, um, you know, wearing a mask, particularly if the uh, kid is ill or if you want to protect yourself from it, because it's through droplets. Uh, and so uh, many masks will work, like a surgical mask. Uh, I think uh, washing your hands, of course, because those respiratory droplets can fall on surfaces. You can touch the surface and then touch your nose or mouth. Uh, staying home when you're sick or keeping your kids home when they're sick. And then uh, finally, of course, uh, vaccinating against all the childhood diseases. Because again, you don't want to have co-infections, which may make things worse. Uh, you don't want to have the noise of the other infections. Uh, so prevention of the other infections for which there's vaccines because there's no vaccine for uh, mycoplasma pneumonia uh, is also a good idea. All right, I see. Well, thank you, Professor Chin Ho, for your advice. Well, hopefully everyone can follow such preventive measures and avoid the infection. Now, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. Uh, thank you, Professor Chin Ho, and thank you, Professor Kim, for thank your you. time and insights. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all for Within the Frame tonight. We'll be back tomorrow with more in-depth stories. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.